modular arithmetic. It is simply computations inside the system Zn. We learned what Zn means as a system. It consists of covalence classes represented by 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. And we have seen before what Z6 is with its equivalence classes as we see here and same thing Z4, Z5 and so on. But here I want to emphasize that as an element, for instance, the congruence class of 4 inside Z6, we know it is given this way. While the congruence class of the same number 4 in Z5, we know it is given this way. And notice they are not equal. They are not equal. They are different elements. The congruence number in four of 4 and 6 has nothing to do with the congruence number of 4 and 5. There are, these are different elements living in different systems, in different environments. They have no relation with each other. And also, please do not think that because you see, for instance, Z5 equals all these numbers. Do not never think that Z5 is a subset or contained in Z6. This is wrong. I'm saying here, this element has nothing to do with this element. So Z5, the elements of Z5 do not live inside Z6. They are different environment. So it is a common mistake that some students will think and say Z5 is a subset of Z6 because of the locking of the elements. This is wrong. This is so wrong. They have nothing to do with each other. Z5 is some system, some environment where computations are taken modulo 5. While Z6 is some other environment where computations are taken modulo 6. Okay? Now, what we are going to learn in this video is how to do computations inside equivalence classes. What we will do, how to add two equivalence classes. What we are seeing here, to add equivalence class A to another equivalence class C, how we do it. How we do it. We take A and C. So we are adding number at the beginning. We are adding integers. So once we get that integer, we take the equivalence class of it and assign it as the addition of the two uh, congruence classes or equivalent classes we started with. So again, I will explain it with my hands. If I want to add equivalence class to another equivalence class, what I do? An equivalence class must be represented by some element. So I take the representative of this equivalence class, which is the integer, and take the representative of the other equivalence class, so I have two integers, add them, I get a new integer. What I do next, I take the equivalence class of this new integer, and this equivalence class will be the resulting of adding the two equivalence classes that I already have. Same thing applies for multiplication. Applying, multiplying equivalence class with another, I will take the representatives, multiply them, get a new integer, and take the equivalence class of that new integer and will assign it as uh, the result of multiplication of the two equivalence classes, which is explained here. I take A, take C, multiply them, I get a new integer, take the equivalence class of it, and assign it as a resulting of this. Okay, now there is an issue in here which we will raise about using uh, uh, the, <coughs> the representatives. But let me first, let us uh, do some uh, examples or this multiplication or addition. Now how I add congruence class of 3 plus congruence class of 4, we are working inside Z5. So what we do, we said take 3, take the 4, add them here, we get 7 take the equivalence cl uh, the congruence class of 7 which is 2 so I will write here we got 3 plus 4 simply equals equivalence class of 2 sorry the equivalence class of 3 equivalence class of 3 plus the equivalence class of 4 is simply 
the equivalence class of two. While here multiplication, so I will take the three and two, multiply them, I get six, and take the equivalence class of six, which is the same as equivalence class of one. So I will write equivalence class of three multiplied by equivalence class of two. Inside Z5, I get equivalence class of one. So simply, I will look at it this way. I take three times two equals six. Six equals to what modulo five? One. I take here three times four uh, plus four gives seven. Seven equals was what modulo five gives two. Let me work other examples in here. I will do them for a quick, but this time we will work in Z6. Okay, three congruent class of three plus congruent class of four. 3 plus 4 is 7, okay? So uh, three, 3 plus 4 is 7, but 7 modulo 6 is 1. So I will do it, I will do it quickly. I will say equivalence cla congruence class of 5 plus congruence class of 4. Then I will say 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 modulo 6 is 3, so this is the result. Again, let me do it uh, one more time in Z. In Z7, I will say now equivalence class of 5 plus equivalence class of 6, which is 5 plus 6, 11. Modulo 7 is 4. Good. Now, what's about multiplication? Uh, let's, let's do multiplication here. Let me multiply 5 multiplied by congruous class of 5 multiplied by congruous class of 6 that means 5 times 6 is 30 30 modulo 7 is 2 if I go back here go back to uh, Z6 and I will see congruous uh, class of 5 times multiplied by congruous class of 3 5 times 3 is 15 modulo 6 is 3. Again, notice here what will happen. Equivalence class, I will do it uh, above there, uh, which I mean in, in Z6. I want to emphasize this is happening in Z6. Notice what, what's going to happen now. Congruence class of 3 times congruence class of 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 modulo 6 is 0. So we got 0. So we multiplied two congruence classes. None of them is 0, but we got 0. We will call them 0 divisor later when we learn about groups. Actually, we have some other 0 divisors. If you go multiply congruence class of 2, multiplied by congruence class of 3 that gives 6 6 modulo 6 is 0 so we are still working here and uh, one more uh, one more example in Z in Z6 I will say equivalence class of 2 plus equivalence class of 4 I get 0 so I have congruous classes none of them is zero but the multiplication is zero and some other none of them is zero but the addition is zero this happens in z6 z4 z8 z10 z12 we will learn about that later but it is good to notice it from now now see what happens here here we have we are adding three congruous class of three plus congruous class of four and we got two. Now, look what's happening here. This congruous class 13 here is the same as this one. They are equal. But we changed the representative. The representative here was three. Now we chose a different representative, which is 13. Same thing happens here. This equivalent class, congruent class, is the same as this one they are equal but instead of four we chose nine instead of four we chose nine so these two 
congruent classes are equal. Four and nine are congruent modulo five. So they have the same equivalence class. But now, what happened if we change the representatives of the equivalence classes? Now, what I'm saying, we have two equivalence classes that I want to add. Okay? Then we add them. Take this representative and this representative, two integers, add them, get a third integer. Take the congruent class of the new integer and assign it as a result of adding these two. Now the question, if I go back to these equivalence classes, the ones, the two I started with, but choose a different representative for this equivalence class and different representative for this equivalence class. Choose these new representatives, the new integers. When I add them, I will get another new integer. When I take the equivalence class, would that be the same equivalence class before I change the representatives? This is the question. Now, let's see here what happened. 13 plus 9 is 22. 22 modulo 5, we are working modulo 5 here, is 2. So we got the same equivalence class. So adding congruence classes to each other using representatives is not affected by using different representatives at each time. So we, so far, we claim that. Let us... Uh, in, in Z5, let's stay here and choose some other classes like 2 congruence class of 2 plus congruence class of 4. Okay, I will choose this different representative for this. So, like uh, congruence class of 2 is the same as congruence class of 7. We are working modulo 5, and congruence class of 4 is the same as congruence class of 19, modulo 5. So these congruence classes, they are the same. Let us do the summation, the addition for both cases. Here we get 2 plus 4, and this is equivalence class of 6, and this is modulo 5, 1, while here we get 7 plus 19, which is equivalence class of 26, which is the same as equivalence class of 1 in uh, Z5. So in either case, we obtained the same equivalence class. So choosing different representatives did not affect the result. Was that by coincidence or shall that be happening always? Let us make sure, let us give it another try in, Z, in Z6. Let us choose two equivalence classes. I will choose here 5 plus 4. I will choose a different representative for equivalence class 5 is the same as equivalence class of 11 modulo z6 and the equivalence class of 4 is the same as equivalence class of 16 modulo 6 so these equivalence classes are the same now let's do the computations this is equivalence class of 9 modulo 6 which is 3 and this is the equivalence class of 27, which is modulo 6, also 3. Equivalence class of 27 is also 3. So, these equivalence classes are the same. So, good. If I add two congruence classes, it does not matter which representative inside I choose. I may change the representative inside. It does not matter. If I choose two congruence classes for two congruence classes if I choose any representative here any representative here integers these representatives are integer add them I get a new integer take the equivalence class and then assign it do this process again choose different from the same equivalence classes choose different representatives again add them we get a different integer here as an addition 
But when you take the Kangos class of this integer, it will come out to be the same as the Kangos class of the integer that resulted before. Will be the same integers, and as you see here. Now, we will prove this theorem. It is a theorem, and uh, it is easy uh, to prove. And it is the basic uh, component of doing modular arithmetic. It is a basic comp uh, component of doing uh, computations inside ZN. Now, what is what did I raise now? Okay. So thing, this thing, does uh, choosing different representatives for congruence classes does not affect the result. This thing does not happen in all systems. It happens in ZN and some other systems, but not in all systems. So that makes us worry about it. So to, to have a sense of that, we will now look for quick into the some system where this fails. Okay, now consider these sets. They share the same properties as Z6 and Z5. How? Every integer in Z, every, every integer positive or negative lives inside one of these sets from A to E. Okay, and also any two of them are either disjoint or identical, which means if I take any two of them, I make the intersection, I get empty set. So every two of them are either disjoint or they are the same set. So this, this behavior is similar to the behavior of the congruence classes of Zn. But see what happened. Here I will claim that, see, one lives here. So the covenance class of one will be claimed to be B. And also negative three lives here. So also B is the equivalence class of three. Also notice that seven lives in Z, in C. So seven, the equivalence class of the seven is C and also 15 lives in C. So the equivalence class of 15 is also C. But also notice that the equivalence class of 8, where is 8? Let's look for it. The equivalence class of 8, it is here. The equivalence class of 8 is D. And the equivalence class of 12, here is 12, is A. Okay, now notice what will happen. Now, 1 is in B. So B is the equivalence class of one. So if I want to add B plus C, so I add the equivalence class of one plus seven, because we said the equivalence class of seven is C. But once we add that, we will get one plus seven, which is the equivalence class of eight, and which is D. So we got here B plus C equals D. Now look again what happened. B is the negative, the, the equivalence class of negative three, plus C is the negative class, uh, the sorry equivalence class of fifteen. Now add them, we get negative three plus fifteen that equals the equivalence class of twelve, which is A. So we got B plus C equals A. So two different answers for the same summation. This is confusing. Here, B plus C is D. Here, B plus C is A. So, using different representatives, which means different representative, for B here, I used one, uh, but for B here, I used negative three. For C here, I used seven, but for C here, I used 15. When I change the representatives, the result has changed. So, choosing different representatives for the classes gives different answers. But this thing will not happen inside Zn. So we, ha we don't have to worry about it. And we will prove what I said. Let's go for it. It is a theorem and it is simple. 
now this is what we are seeing here if we got two if I represented one equivalence class but one time with A another time with B and I have another uh, congruence class that I represented by one time with C and another time with D then adding these represented these representatives A and C together and take the equivalence class and adding the other representatives B and D together and take the equivalence the congruence class then the resulting two congruence class will be the same thing similar thing applies to A C multiply A and C and take the equivalence uh, congruence class multiply the other representatives B D take the, the congruence class we will have the same class so this operation is, is said we say this is a plus and this operation we call them operation these operations these operations are well defined well defined well defined operations we worry about such operations when we make operations between equivalent classes because the operations on the equivalent or congruent classes depends on the representatives so we worry if we change the representatives would the result of that operation becomes different if no if changing the representative does not affect the resulting congruent or equivalent class then we will say that operation is well defined well defined operation means does not depend on the choice of the representatives so okay we will prove it now we have here equivalence, cl a, equivalence class of A is the same as equivalence class of B this means by a theorem we have seen before which is a 2.3 in our textbook this means A is congruent to B modulo N A congruent to B modulo N same thing since C and D have the same equivalence class by the same theorem we have C equals congruent to D modulo N now by a theorem we have seen before which is theorem 2.2 .2, if we add now A plus B sorry now if we add this thing together A to C or multiply will be the same thing if we add or multiply B and D so this theorem says A plus C is still congruent to B plus D modulo N and A plus sorry A times C is congruent to B times D I wish I did not write with the dot modulo N and now again by uh, theorem I want to remove the dot so A times C equals B times D modulo N now this again by theorem 2.3 that means A plus C the congruence class of it is the same as the congruence class of B plus D so you remember if we have two elements that are congruent modulo n then they make the same equivalence class and same thing here AC is congruent to BD modulo n so they say they make the same equivalence class and we have just proved this and this okay now we can work freely now we can make the definition after we made sure that this operation is well defined the result will not be affected by changing the representatives now we can s define be feel comfortable to define the operation as we have seen before here let's play play with uh, some computations inside uh, this is z z5 inside z5 so let's do the addition we have done already some of them uh, three I will do it for a quick uh, three 
plus congruence class of 3 plus congruence class of 3. I will take the representative. 3 plus 3 is 6. Modulo 5 is 1. Here we got 1. Let's change the color. 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3, 7. Modulo 5 is 2. So the result is 2. Let's work more. 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Modulo 5 is 3. And so on. Let's go here. This is multiplication now. We were doing adding here. Now we will do multiplication here. Okay. 4 times 4. 16. Modulo 5 is 1. Here we go. And 3 times 3. 9. Modulo 5 is 4. So the result is the congruence class of 4. 2 times 2. 4. Modulo 5 is 4. So we are here. So this is fun. Let's have more fun with Z6. That has something which, which is, does not exist in uh, Z5. So here we are working in Z6. This is Z6. Let's go for adding. Let's go for adding. So if we say 2 plus 4, that is 6. Modulo 6, we get 0. So 2 plus 4 equals 0. None of them is 0. This happens in Z6. Let's go to 4 times 5. Uh, sorry, plus. 4 plus 5 is 9. Modulo 6 is 3. Okay. Let's go to 5 plus 3, which is 8. Modulo 6 will give us 2. Okay. Now let's go here. 4. We work in multiplication here. 4 times 4. 16. Modulo 6 is 4. Modulo 6 is 4, right? Yes. Now, 5 times 5. 25. Modulo 6 is 1. Okay. Now, what is this? Something strange here happened. 3 times 4. Is 12 modulo 6 is 0 so we have what call them later 0 divisor so we multiply 3 times 4 none of them is 0 and result the result is 0 so I have already explained that and also 2 times 3 is 6 so it is uh, 0 and we can do more like uh, 2 times uh, 1 which is 2 and so on so have fun with this uh, multiplication table okay good so so far we have learned that the addition and multiplication of the congruence classes in z which is which are done by using representatives okay now we achieved that we will learn some properties of these operations, which, uh, which are very natural properties. Now, we go back to properties of the arithmetic you know in Z, the trivial ones. Like if you have A and B two integers, and then you add them together, you still get an integer. So this is called the closure addition. A closed mean for any set to be closed under some operation, it means that Take two elements from that set and apply the binary operation in them. You get another element. If that element is still in the set, then we we'll say that set is closed under multiplication. Honestly, to say that, this thing must happen for every two elements. We take any two elements, any two elements, multiply them. The resulting element is still in A, then we say A is closed under multiplication or addition. This is for closed under multiplication. This is addition. This is called associative. Associativity of addition. It means if I want to add three things, which ones I add? The first two or the second two? The answer does not matter. If you either add the last two or the first two first, it does not matter. Same thing, associative for multiplication. If you multiply the last two and they multiply by the first one, or multiply the first two and multiply by the remaining one, 
either case will be the same addition is commutative a plus b equals b plus a and so multiplication is commutative okay adding the zero to any element does not change anything to that element so we will call the zero additive identity additive identity so what is the additive identity of the multiplication what is the element if you multiply by any other element integer then you get that integer which is one so one here is the multiplicative uh, identity now you know that the solution of this equation is a x equal negative a and negative a lives in z okay now this is the distribution you can distribute we know we can do that from left or from right we call them distribution now here uh, okay okay these properties you already know them since uh, elementary school right and they are applied in z now the question do these properties also applied for the modular arithmetic do these operations also applies for the addition and the multiplication of the congruence classes that we have already learned answer is yes they do apply except number 11 here this one will not apply this one says if I multiply two integers and get zero then one of these integers must be zero this you know that take two integers multiply them and then you get zero the reason the only reason for that is one of the integers you chose was zero but in in uh, our systems this is not the same like in z6 we have seen that none of the congruence classes is zero we have seen that zero uh, uh, is not equal to any of these congruence classes but when you multiply them in z6 in z6 we get zero so this property does not go from z to the end but the other properties they do go okay now let's see what we have next okay this is the properties we're talking about now if I have if uh, I have a and B if I have a and B the congruence class of a and the congruence class of B in Z then their addition will be in the end like because a plus B is an integer take it modulo in and that's it you get the congruence class same thing here if a and B are congruence classes in the end then their multiplication is a congruent class right because the multiplication we multiply a times b you get an integer and take the equivalence class it will be in the end it's still there so it is closed associative if i add the last two congruence classes first or the first two congruence classes first it does not matter multiplication is also associative if i multiply the last two congruence classes or the first two congruence classes i get I still get the same commutative a plus b congruence class of a plus congruence class of b equals congruence class of b plus congruence class of a and so on same thing for multiplication here now the congruence class of zero here serves as the additive identity and the congruence class of one here serves as the additive identity okay now what remains here is the distributive distributive uh, laws so uh, let me use a different color because they, we get a lot of notation we distribute a over b here we go right okay now we distribute a over c here we go right and this summation is still as it is here so we distributed the multiplication over the summation now this goes the other way from the left a to B is this one different color and A to A is this one and again this is operation is the same as this one so to prove it is easy actually to prove these operations uh, we will go together and prove uh, number eight 
let let us prove the first part of number eight so what I'm going to prove here is a multiplied by the congruence class of B plus the congruence class of C let's see what equals okay so uh, let's operate the, let's do this let's perform this first so it is congruence class of A times add these things together we get that okay now we want to multiply two equivalence classes so we multiply the representatives so we get a times b plus c now these are integers these are integers so we can make the distribution this way so this is A times B plus C times D okay but this thing is the addition of the of these equivalence classes okay and now this thing is this thing here is the multiplication so I have addition of equivalence classes, I'm going to do this. So it is the multiplication of equivalence classes, which means congruence class of A times congruence class of B. And this plus now goes here, the congruence class of C times the congruence class of D. Now what happened going from here all the way, we have seen this is distributed here and distributed here, and we got that, and it is done. So the proof of eight is done. So you are supposed now to prove the remaining properties, especially um, the associative law and the other distribution law. I recommend you to do that to get used to it. Okay, here now it's a matter of notation. If we have a equivalence class in Zn, what do we mean by raising this to power k? By raising this to power k. Uh, it's it means I will multiply this equivalence class with itself k times so I prefer that we will write it this way the equivalence class to power k is the same as I raise k itself to power a itself to power k and then take the resulting equivalence class of it or sometimes sometimes take the equivalence class of e and the multiply okay but the same thing let's see here uh, equivalence class of 3 to power 4 is the same as equivalence class of 3 to power 4 uh, so which is equivalence class of 81 and we are in modulo 5 here so this is the same as equivalence class of 1 okay now if we do another example uh, if we assume ourselves in Z6 uh, I, I need space here and we do a 3 to power 4 in Z6 we are working for this which means 3 to power 4 which means the congruence class of 8 to 1 modulo 6 which is 3 the congruence class of 3 okay good okay now last thing here we want to discuss about the solution of this equation look at this equation here uh, it is translated the fol translated the following way x square plus 5x equals 0 this is the normal equation that uh, you are you used to but because we are working in z6 uh, the equation will look like uh, something different why because the multiplication uh, of the multiplication addition we defined so this will be x square but for this addition we will use the equivalent uh, congruence class addition okay and for this constant we will use the co congruence class of this constant okay so this is and we have a multiplication here right and we will use the uh, multiplication of congruence classes times x 
equals and this constant we will replace it by its equivalence class so the equation came out to be uh, here as we see here okay now the question is which of the uh, elements of z5 z6 which means the equivalence classes these equivalence classes which of them satisfy this equation which means I want to take uh, an equivalence class square it and then here we go let me uh, square it square it okay and then multiply that equivalence class with the congruence class of five okay and add these things together and see whether we get the equivalence congruence class of zero let's see how that happened try with the zero this is for zero square if x is zero then this means it is uh, this is zero square this is x square and this is uh, this is the plus here and this is uh, x here so we got that so we got this equation L let's compute it zero uh, times zero is zero here we go so uh, let me use these colors so the for this one i get that one and for five times zero i get zero add them we get zero so yes it is a solution so let's try again with x equals one x equals one so this is x square which is one and this is five times x which is five add them together modulus x we get zero so it is a solution okay let's try it for two so this is two square 2 times 2 is 4, modulus 6 is 4. Now 5 times 2 is 10, modulus 6 is 4. Let me, let me use the other color for it. 5 times 2 is 10, modulus 6 is 4. Now add them 8, modulus 6 is 2. So this is not a solution. Let me do it one more time with x equals 3. So 3 times 3, 3 squared is 9, modulus 6 is 3. And 5 times 3 is 15, modulus 6 is 3. Now 3 plus 3 is 0, so we get a solution. And I will let uh, you uh, try these things. Now, uh, these computations here. Now, you, uh, you observe that the solutions came out to be the following. A solution is, yes, x is a solution. x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 3. And x equals 4 so we have we have four solutions we have four solutions here they are but wait a minute how come we have a solutions for quadratic equations so we have four solutions for a quadratic equation but we know quadratic equation of degree 2 it has at most two solutions how come we have four solutions here the answer because what you know what says that a polynomial of degree n has at most n solutions that applies to the real numbers or the complex numbers or the rational numbers or z the integers that's what you learned in the elementary school. It applies for the systems you know. Zn is a new system. It is different. It behaves differently. So an equation of degree 2 might, might have four solutions. It happens. And this is because actually of having zero divisors in Z6, 3 times 4, and Z6 is 0. This is the reason behind it. So this equation has four solutions in Z6. Okay, and this brings us to the end of this section. Thank you.